were you saying? We've been reading the definitions. Okay. I, oh, I've also they... seen that a, a bank is someone doing banking business, so that's that's fine as well. Everything that is done in this country is done in a banking capacity. You are a bank, okay? You are banked upon the land in this country. So you are a national banker. That simple. <clears throat> okay? You have assets, and basically uh, your labor is assets. But you bank your labor assets with the damn Social Security foreign banking system. And I will go into that. Embezzlement is very big also. You need to understand what that word says. Okay? It's the fraudulent appropriation or concealment to one's own use of a state property even in one's possession. So if they confiscate your vehicle, they are embezzling that vehicle. And they are basically, it's a, it's a statutory offense. It's not a common law crime. It's a statutory offense. And the fraudulent appropriation and conversion by an agent, an employee, a corporate officer, a trustee, a public officer, or other person acting in a fiduciary capacity or character of money or property, the possession of which has been entrusted to him by another. Larceny is when you do not give consent. Embezzlement, you do give consent. Like when you sign a traffic ticket or whatever, you're giving consent. Basically, like I told one guy, I said, yeah, if you want to sign a damn traffic type, Ticket to sign it as insurer is insolvent. Say so that's my first, middle, and last name. In their corporate contracts for their insurance policy, you're no longer going to be the insurer of their insured corporate bank insurance policies. And then crime of embezzlement is a crime of injury to the magistery. And you are the magistery. In almost every state constitution out there, it says we the people are the sovereignty of the state. We're not the sovereigns. Stop trying to be a sovereign. You're not a king or anything like that. You are a sovereignty. You are a prince. <clears throat> okay? There was no king or anything set up in this country. But in a way, we have a uh, emperor of the nation that wears no clothes because the emperor is really the Constitution of the United States of America. That is the ruling document, the ruler that we have assigned to be holding our title of king in this or emperor in this country. So 
So you can go through all the embezzlements also. In a lot of cases, a lot of these things are crime, C-R-I-M-E-N, F-A-L-S-I. which they are fraudulent alterations or forgery to conceal or alter the truth and to prejudice to the prejudice of another. They're bringing all these false claims and everything in against us because they're a foreign corporation. And we are a national bank. That certificate of live birth registration number was your national bank account registration number. And I'll prove that in a second here. And going through and starting to look through a lot more, and I said all along, that all your remedy is found in the dictionaries, not in the codes. The codes are hidden for their benefit, and in a lot of cases, to deceive you into misunderstandings. Just like a most of the offices out here have a dual purpose. One good example is the FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigations. Well, basically, we need to have a uh, bank inspectors out here in this at the national level. So basically, the FBI is the federal bank inspectors. FBI, federal bank inspectors. That's your alternative hat. You can find this documented in numerous movies out here. One is the movie The Double. You can go in and find out that, yes, the FBI is basically a bank inspector. Everything that is operated in this country is done by banking, commerce. Drug trafficking, it's a commodity. It's trafficking in a commodity. Banks operate in commodities, whether they're a bartering bank or whether they're a currency bank. They're still a bank. When I was going through Ballantyne's Dictionary, I came across Bank Conservation Act. This reads, a federal statute which provides for the appointment by the comptroller of the currency of a conservator of a national bank found by the comptroller to be in failing circumstances, not liquidation of the bank, but for conservation of assets, there being prospect that the bank later may be in a position to reopen and resume its corporate functions. You were set up at the age of one year from date of conception. That means the date you were born into your mother's arms plus three months, and that is your first birth day. You are birthed onto the land, or you were banked upon the land, and you were given a national bank account. And basically, the comptroller set up a conservator over our bank until we came of age. Hmm. 
for the conservation of our assets, there being prospect that the bank may later be in a position to reopen and resume corporate functions. When you woke up, But when of the right age, we gave public accommodation acceptances to two main foreign-controlled conservators over our national bank's supplemental deposited credits and they are the Social Security Administration, our bank labor credits under an insurance, and the Veterans Administration, if you served in the military, for our military service bounty credits under an insurance. This was then followed up with public accommodation acceptance to set up foreign controlled state bank accounts, bank accounts to access and hold our credits and property under state bank insurances. The conservator was to take one appointed, and it doesn't necessarily have to be by a court. Like I said, back up there, the comptroller of the currency. You're fading, Patrick. The comptroller of the currency can set up a conservator. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a uh, coming from a court. Hmm. One for a person, one appointed to take custody of the property or a state of a missing person. A person appointed for the custody and protection of property of an insane person. And 99% of the people in this country are totally insane. Because they'll believe any goddamn thing that people tell them. They don't have the power of reasoning to know right and wrong. They think they do. But just look at them on how they operate. I've told you before, you need to go through... When you find something, you check out all the words in that definition. Missing person. Well, there's a missing person act. And you can read that one. Like I said, we're a national bank. What does it say about a national bank? an instrumentality or agency of the federal government, although for the most part similar in nature to and governed by the same rules as state banks insofar as their functions, power, and liabilities are concerned. That's first. But a private banking corporation organized under United States statutes intended for public accommodation. Public accommodation, a place open to serve the public. An inn, a hotel. Oh, my God. 
That brings back memories of Hotel California. Mm-hmm. See how all these things sort of fit in place when you start thinking about these things? About these things? National Banking Association, a national bank, as the term is used in the judicial codes, providing that for the purposes of suits against them, they are deemed citizens of the state. Now you know how they got you to be a citizen of the state. Under the judicial codes. State. A complete body of free persons united together for their common benefit to enjoy peacefully what is their own and to do justice to others. Under the United States Constitution, a political community of free citizens doesn't say enslaved citizens, it says free citizens. State doesn't say free per or It says free persons. It does not say enslaved persons. Is that Valentine? How how is all this stuff being taken place? Because the people don't know the powers that you have. As a national bank. And then that you are dealing with foreign entities out here under these state of all capital or United States all capital foreign controlled banks. Free, without restraint, coercion not enslaved, not bound. Freedom, liberty, absent of restraint. Freedom of religion. Okay, for the Constitution. Being absolute and beyond interference by legislation. The second under the 14th Amendment is subject to regulation, but is to prevent subversive act, prevent acts subversive to civil government or otherwise criminal. But if you're operating in just commerce with your full rights, free rights and everything, you are not subversive to the civil government. Banker, look up in, uh, I think you'll find in uh, Black's Dictionary about banker, individual banker, and also private banker. Banker's lien. Okay, there's a bank lien, and then there's a banker's lien. 
just like there's a banker's uh, note and a bank note. A banker's note is a bank note issued by a private unincorporated bank. You are unincorporated bank. That's for bank note by itself, just single bank. Banker's note. note. Oh, banker's note. Okay. B a n k e r apostrophe s note. Okay, I thought a you bank said. a bank note is one that's issued by all these other commercial banks. Commission. Commission is basically an authority, a writ, an authorization, a written authority from a competent source given to a public officer as the warrant for the exercise of the powers and duty of the office which he occupies. You have the right to issue a commission because you are a commissioner, one who issues having a commission. You are operating under your letter of patent. And you're also a commission merchant. You can look that one up too. A commission merchant differs from a broker in that he may buy and sell in his own name without disclosing his principal, while a broker can only buy and sell in the name of his principal. And there's a big difference between a commission merchant and factor. Competent person, a person legally qualified by age and mental capacity. You have to understand banking. You said factor is by age or mental? Competent person, a person legally qualified by age and mental capacity. Okay, okay, competent, okay, not factor. That's a different word, okay, competent, yeah. Now, you are able to issue a commission. You go into letters of marquee and reprisal. A commission issued during a state of war between one belligerent government authorizing a privateer to attack ships and seize the property of a hostile nation on the high seas. That's out of Ballard times. Marquee and reprisal, I can't remember which one I got this one out of. The name, it, was, it either came out of Blacks or uh, I don't know where it came out of Bouvier's or whatever. The name given to a commission granted by the supreme power of a state to a private person for the purposes of seizing property of a foreign state or its subjects. Letter of Marquis, a commission given to a private ship by a government to make reprisals on the ships of another state, hence also the ship is thus commissioned. We will issue a letter of marquee and reprisal to the 
comptroller of the currency to have the U.S. Marshals and the FBI go and seize our foreign assets. That's about the only way that we're going to be able to enforce this. Is the comptroller of currency uh, the IRS commissioner? No. The comptroller of currency is the IRS commissioner. And I have his name and everything up there. Okay? His name is Thomas Curry. And I had Tom post the fax cover sheet. And this is also our right of expatriation out of this. Two documents that need to be done. Okay? I had one of them up there before. And it was called a Cascio Musiana. Yeah. C A U T I O M U C I A N A. And it's my Cascio Musia, whatever. National Banking Security. We send that to the control of the currency, stating that we will not interfere. We will operate with just banking and bartering system out here, using lawful currency of exchange, asset backed. We will not get into the usury system or savings system out here. We will utilize our account the way it's supposed to be, justly. We revoke all public foreign accommodation acceptances because of their continued embezzlements of estate property. And it is your right of expatriation. Then you are issuing a letter of marquee and a reprisal to this comptroller's office to have the U.S. Marshals and the FBI, federal banking inspectors, seize all of your foreign-controlled assets that are transferable American assets per the attached controlled insured banked account manifest. So you'll do a national banking letter of marquee and reprisal, and then on that, you're going to put your manifest on there of what I've been putting out here about how to write up a manifest for all your state, liquidation of all your state assets that you gave under these public accommodation acceptances to foreign controlled banks. Whether it be the United States Bank or the State of Bank or to these administrations like the Social Security Administration or the Veterans Administration. They're foreign controlled, both of them. And they are continuing to embezzle our assets. Like what I said about embezzlement. You need to really get that through your mind. Fraudulent appropriation and conversion. Or fraudulent appropriation and concealment. 
to one's own use of a state property. We paid in the Social Security. Do we have full access to all that we put in there? No. Why? Because it's under foreign control. Because we haven't stood up and claimed our assets away from them as a national banker. One of the most powerful persons in this country is the control of the currency. But we did not do our jobs like on a mortgage. The control of the currency has to terminate those bonds that are written on that house at the end of three years. The bank turns around and sells it to another bank because they can't reissue bonds against that same house, that same mortgage, because it's essentially been paid for. So they turn around and sell it to another bank in the process, and now new bonds are written. But see, the control of a currency doesn't have control over that unless you complain. And nobody's complaining. Because they didn't understand the system. They're operating in an insane understanding of the monetary system out here. That's why you need to have a commissioner or a conservator over your account because you don't understand the monetary system. All insurance is bad, is evil. It's a demonic religion. It's a violation of the First Amendment to the Constitution that Congress does not have the power to set up another religion and force you into that other religion. The Constitution was a religious. There is no separation of church or of state and religion. There is separation of church and state. Religion is not a church. That's where most people have a total misunderstanding out here. Religion is a set of beliefs. And the Constitution is a set of beliefs. It's that simple. When you understand what's really going on. And I've gone over this and over this numerous times before in the past. So... Basically, from the documents that I have out there, anybody ought to be able to pull together what I just went over here tonight. And the last call that I did there, going over and addressing that we need to go to the comptroller of the currency. I think I did. Maybe I yeah, did. Yeah, you also said go to the magistrate. 
Yeah, well, basically, the magistrate, what we found out is, in a lot of cases, is your county attorney or your U.S. trustee. They work for the attorney general's office. Right. They normally have a judge sitting there, but the judge is just more or less an administrator in their system, a judicial system out here right now, a fraudulent system. They're not really true judges because a woman cannot be a judge in this country. So they're just an administrator, a banking administrator. They're sitting on a bench. A banking bench. But the prosecutor or the U.S. trustee are basically the ones that are the true commissioners, okay? Like in the definition I went over there before, previously, to set up talking about the magistrates, that at the federal level, it was the U.S. commissioner. And at the state level, uh, when you come in as the insurer, you're not the insured. You're insuring the dead as the insurer. You're paying homage to a demonic religion, a dead religion, dead man's religion, because you're worshiping the dead. You're paying homages into your dead person's account. They go into the coffin, his coffin. Now, in a lot of cases, these government officials and everything out here are embezzling out of that coffin. That is known as grave robbery. I've used that term before, too. And see, they can get away with that because the dead, they don't complain. They're dead. But you're the living. You're the one that has to complain. You have to be out there at the graveyard checking grandma's uh, plot there to make sure that nobody's digging the damn thing up to get that million dollar brooch that she has hanging around her neck. Because that's what they're doing to our accounts right now. That you're not monitoring them to know what you've got. Because 99% of the people don't believe a damn thing that I'm saying. Then you wonder where their true beliefs are. Because if you can't believe what I'm saying, you don't believe in the Constitution of this country. Not to say much, but if we didn't listen, we wouldn't be here. There's few of us who do. I didn't hear you. There's it's very soft rate. Listen, that's why we're here. And I thank you, Patrick, for it. Well, I'm hoping somebody picks up something on my words that I've been putting out here. If I didn't believe, I wouldn't be here, Patrick. You know that. Okay. 
I probably believe more in what you're saying than what any clown out there has got to say. You make sense out of it. The other idiots are in just a mess. Yeah, because they're looking at the codes and everything else, and they're not looking at what the words mean. And that's what I've said all along. Until you understand the words, you will not know how to use the words. So don't think you know what you're doing. I never said I did. I'm not talking about you, okay? Okay. I'm talking about people in general. I'm not trying to belittle you people that are on the line. I know you're here trying to learn. But I'm hoping that this audios and everything get out to a broader field of people out there and that basically my harping on this will finally sink into them. And that's security, like I said. What I had written up there, and I had Tom post that up there previously, is that we will not operate in competition with these foreign entities out here. Therefore, they have no right to try and attack us. If they do, they're attacking the nation. Because now we're operating as a national bank. And now they can't embezzle any longer against us. So now anything that they come after us would be a larceny. Yeah, when you remove yourself out of giving consent, that removes it out of the embezzlement item and into larceny, and in a lot of cases now grand larceny. Hmm. Well, if we have our estate EIN numbers, Everything should be in probate if we haven't received our assets. It's not in probate. Oh, it's not? Okay. No. Okay. It's in, basically, there's a conservator, okay? Yeah. It's in conservatorship. All right, all right. Yeah, I remember Not that. in probate. All right, conservatorship, right. We have to read those words, yeah. Yes. I didn't use the word probate once tonight. Up until this point. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mistaked it here. Yeah, I mean, you sit around and basically you have, especially you can start seeing this when you try and go and get your Social Security account, your uh, retirement, and basically they uh, tamper you from getting it. You try and get a VA pension, and you're, everybody's entitled to a VA pension because it's against your military bounty. If you serve time in the service, you have a military bounty.
But the VA comes back and says, well, only, you can only get a pension if you did this and this and this and this and this. That you were under, in the Vietnam, you were on the ground in Vietnam, you were uh, directly exposed to Agent Orange after it was released from the damn planes over Vietnam. Right. Hell, those damn bombs leak. The airmen that are back at the air bases on land in the United States that were in the service at that point in time, they come down with a cancer or something. Well, they're not entitled to a pension because they weren't on the ground over in Vietnam. But yet they were supporting the whole thing. They were handling the damn weapons. Just like radiation exposure. They try and weasel their way out of everything possible about the uh, radiation exposure that they did to the military people. But there's only one way you're going to get your stuff out of your military bounty away from them, and that is to turn it over under a letter of marquee and appraisal to the Comptroller of the Currency. Putting him under a commission to you. I don't know, did everybody get those words downloaded that uh, Tom put up there? That'll give you a start. And then the other ones that I went over on the call here tonight, and if you need to, listen to this call about four, five, six, ten times, and then you might fully understand what's going on. I have to do that to myself constantly. Hey, Patrick, is the letter of marquee and reprisal um, not too offensive that, like, they aren't going to freak out if we do it? Like, I don't expect you to know what they're going to do, but I just, you know. No, I'm... they're not going to freak out okay. because you are at the national level. You're the sovereignty of the land. Right. Okay? Yeah. And you're at the national level. A letter of marquee and appraisal cannot be issued at the state level. Right. And the we're state... also, you said, the royalty or we're the princes. Yes. We are an American prince. Right. So you're a mayor. A mayor is prince. Right, right. A mayor is prince in admiralty. Right. Sovereignty is basically a prince. You're not the sovereign, but you're the sovereignty. That means you are the prince of the sovereign. Right. We the people are the ones over the Constitution. They're all employees of ours. Yeah, and we're just trying to... uh collect what is ours. It's not an act of war or anything to try to get what's yours. We're just trying to take control of our estate, okay? state and our property and that we were supposed to be a free man not an enslaved uh, 
restricted getting privileges. We were supposed to have rights. But we got into this demonic patronage religious system out here, and you have the right to leave that religious system because that is a church. That's a false church. And that's when you have to bring in your separation of church and state. Okay, any questions? Yes, Patrick, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, My question is based from the uh, IRS Form 1041. Um, I've been connecting some dots. You've just connected a lot of them tonight, and this may very well take me out if everything that I'm thinking is correct. Under that 1041, it has uh, the uh, Chapter 7 bankruptcy. So I know someone who was able to pull money out of the estate using that 1041 by filing, by using that Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Um, the the issue that I'm having is just that you pointed out the first trustee. So all we have to do is get rid of that first trustee, and we should be able to get all of our assets, right? But you're not going to use the 1041 form. Okay. Why would you need to use it, Okay. You turn around and you have the conversion through the control of the currency. You have your foreign estate or foreign trust, EIN. Yes. Then you pull out the assets out in gold and silver and have them converted into lawful currency of exchange and deposited into your estate, National Bank a state account. Okay. That's perfect. Redeeming and lawful money, basically. Yes. Basically, your national bank has a savings and a checking account to it. It's a non-interest-bearing checking account, but it is a dividend accruing savings account. And that is under your foreign grant or trust EIF. Okay. So you have to have a routing number to route the funds out of your savings account over to your checking account, which is your estate account. That's your checking account. And then you have to have a routing number for your checking account to go out there, a bank routing number, and that's your estate EIN. Okay. I'm just going to go back through the call, and I'm pretty sure it's going to connect for me. Uh, it's just the whole routing number and the account number that I just got to piece together in my head so that when I yeah, do send this information to Wednesday, off. Last Wednesday night, listen to the last couple of weeks of phone calls. Okay. I've gone over this before. Yes, sir. Will do. That's okay. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, using the 1040 and the 1041s and all those 1099s, those are for mm-hmm. the brokers, okay? okay? They're not for us. They're for the dead entities out here. And in 99% of the cases, they're trying to get you to pay their taxes for them. Because you're in a patronage ship in this church in this false religion. And basically, the patriot ship members have to pay to keep the church going. So basically, if the church gets a tax liability, then all the patriots have to 
pay their fair share. Just like any other church. The religious leader of that church wants a new uh, chair or something to sit on the damn pulpit up there. Who's going to pay for it? All the members of the church are. That minister ain't going to pay for it out of his back pocket because he don't work. He's a fucking leech. He's a vampire, blood sucker. Now you know what I think about all these damn churches out here. So we don't have to deal with the whole court of chancellery and all of that either? No. Okay. Read the definitions and you'll see how simple this was. Yes, sir. It was just that we had a hard time trying to find out who the comptroller of currency was. It just so happened that basically I sent it to the wrong place, and there was somebody in that damn office that was nice enough to say, hey, these look like important documents. Uh, I'm going to call you up and say, hey, uh, so that you don't think that we're processing them for you, I'm going to let you know that you sent them to the wrong place. And she gave me the correct place to send them. And then I called them up and basically got right through to a living person, which is unusual there in Washington, D.C. To get right into a living person. Normally you get a damn audio machine and then you sit there for about a half hour, two hours, waiting for somebody to talk to, and by that time they've hung up on you. But I talked to this living person and asked him, do you have a fax number? said, yes, here it is. So basically I sent two faxes off Thursday and Friday last week to him. Do you or Thomas recall where those papers are that are to the comptroller of the currency? I'm looking for them. It's not they, terminate domestic you. contracts. It's they, not they, internal revenue been, banking creditor. They've been sent out to everybody. Oh, I know. I just where, where's it at on the files? I just I'm just wondering if you guys know. I'll keep looking if I got to keep looking. I don't expect you to know. They were just posted last thir- or Friday. Okay. Friday afternoon. Didn't you post those, Tom? Yep. Yeah. A couple hours after you sent them to me. Yeah. Okay, so that's the 17th, yeah. Yeah, because one of them was the Expatriation Act, page 2, and then the other was the fax cover sheet. Oh, that's probably where it's at then, yeah. And you need to read that Expatriation Act. Oh, I did, yeah. I tried to put more emphasis on what it's really saying. If you get those other, that 5,000 year uh, audios posted onto the concurrent there, Tom? No, I'll, I'll get them up. I'll put, put me a note right here. Yes, I'll get them. Yeah, I'm enjoying those. Those are pretty good. I'm on about five or six now. It, it just tells you how to run the country and how to balance the wings. No, it tells you a hell of a lot more than that. It tells oh, I you know, I know what that. they went through to go through all the reiterations of setting the Constitution up to make it almost a perfect document. Yeah. And give us our total protections that we need to have. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. <clears throat> you 
Any uh, other questions, comments, or whatever? I found it. It is the Expatriation Act. Yeah, with the definitions. That's just a sample, though. It's not really what you would send, I guess. Yes, the fax and the phone number are right there. And the comptroller of currency is Thomas Curry. Yeah, I see it. 407th Street, South oh. Hey Patrick, quick question. Yeah. Again, um, I'm I'm in Washington State, but I'm from Pennsylvania, so um, I really need to be taking care of business in my in the state where I was born, right? No, you don't. No, you, you need don't. to take care of it at the national level with the comptroller of currency. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Yeah. It's you're for a everybody. national yeah. bank. You're not you're not a state, state bank of right. Pennsylvania or a That's state right. bank of Washington. Yes, sir. Okay. And every the comptroller of the currency has an office in every state out here. Okay. And basically, what do they have? They have banking inspectors. They also have secret agent men in every state. The Secret Service. Because they are the enterprise financial management monitors. But the FBI is the federal bank inspectors. Like I said, watch the movie, uh, and you'll see this in other movies out there, that the FBI is doing bank inspections for the vast majority of their endeavors. What's the movie recommendation? The Double. The Double? Okay. Now, it's about this communist. Uh, well, two of them basically were uh, communist, ex communist. Uh, Members. Um, one of them became a member of the CIA, and this other one was working now for the FBI. And at the very end, uh, the CIA director said, "How would you like to turn around and come work for uh, me, or work for the country, or whatever?" Because he sort of knew that he was basically a double agent. Patrick, on the definitions that I got, um, the last definition or the last title is public accommodation acceptance. Now, was there? There's no definition with that. Is there more that didn't come through? Yeah, there are several that I went over on the call tonight. You'll have to listen to the call and write them down. Okay. In a lot of cases, you take those definitions and you go into the words that are in there and you look up those other words. Don't think you know what accommodation means. I said, well, basically, maybe I don't really know what accommodation means. So I went and looked up accommodation and I came up with all these other items under accommodation. Accommodation acceptance, accommodation of this and that, said, oh, that's where we basically, we were accommodating these people in signing that driver's license. We were giving them access to our credits. We were accommodating them to have access to our credits. That's what it means. And then, like in the one about the uh, the national or the bank conservative act, 
it had National Bank in there. So I went and looked up and said, well, I better look up and see what National Bank is. And then there are several items there in the dictionary. Going into embezzlement, there are several words in usage in embezzlement there that you need to turn around and check out down the line. Letters of marquee, basically a commission. What's a commission? Well, basically it's just a written document in some cases. And then if you're the writer of that document, then you are the commissioner of that document. See, there's more meanings to words out here than people really think about. And that's been the downfall of the people in this country. They think they know what the words mean, but they don't. So you basically send the letter of Marquis directly, give him permission for him to wage war on our behalf to the controller of the currency. We're already in a war, okay? We're not waging a war. We're just going in and going after these belligerent entities to have our assets retrieved. Okay. And that's basically documented right in that Expatriation Act. <laughs> Yes, I see that right now. Anybody else? Any newcomers? Speak up. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm interested in um, sending uh, the the, uh, the twenty five dollars and the uh, flash drive, so I can just send that directly to you, and I'll in the return envelope, and we're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. And then I'll put several of these documents and stuff on there. I'm trying to redo them before I send these out uh, this last time here uh, from the changes that I've made over the last week and a half, two weeks. So I, I got tried to post up the Tom, but they see uh, uh, I've uh, got several now here that they see uh, written up that I'll try and uh, get posted out here on those CDs and uh, thumb drives that people sent me that I still owe to be sent back to them. But for the most part, uh, you other people that I sent uh, that CD to, those 500-year audios are on those discs. 5,000, oh yeah, 500, yeah. I thought it was 5,000. 5,000 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. See, it goes all the way back to Moses' time in the Paritic system, the Babylonian system, the Medes Persian system. The Medes Persians were one of the better operating outfits out there in that they released the Hebrews when Daniel approached them and said that their 70-year uh, time frame was up. They weren't all necessarily the barbarous uh, entities that the bankers portrayed them to be. When somebody badmouths somebody too damn much, you know that the bankers are behind it. Right. Well, Patrick, I noticed that when you put people on first base and you try to tell them that the United States is a corporation chartered in England in 1871 and that it's not 
being an American national, they immediately just go into La La Land. They just can't, you know. You it's like have a, to approach them in certain regards and a lot of this stuff to first get them to start thinking why, if you are a free person in this country, why are you not free? Why are you being controlled? Yeah. What's going on here? Right. Ask questions like that, yeah. Yeah. Make them think. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, and then you can go from there to uh, accommodation party for them to get into your credits, and then from there they get into embezzlements. But yeah, they're 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 making they're taking the embezzlement. They're, you can show they're them creating the, the dead guy. And everything and, else, you can yeah, give them yeah. some of these audios and get them to start listening to them. Yeah. Okay, you can give them that five thousand year. Take and put it on to another CD and hand it out. Right. Good idea. My computer doesn't burn things, I don't think, but I can find somebody that does. Some computers just do it right on the computer, right? You can always put it on a thumb drive, okay? Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, and they're getting cheaper, too. Yep. So with, like, my situation... I was planning on doing going to the magistrate into the superior court, comma county. To the Blaster. county prosecutor and put your claim in about embezzlement yeah. of your property, okay? Right. And right. that you are a national bank. Right. And that you are going to be informing uh, the comptroller of a currency about the fraud and the concealment and the confiscation of your property. Yeah. Read the definitions. Now that you've got the definitions, you should be able to come up with your solutions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm working on it full time. Okay. Any others out there that have questions? We shouldn't use the WAIMY either. The what? That, that, that form look is... It just looks like they can't stop that form. They have to give it up. Forms they have to give up everything. Dead, that's right. Okay. Forms, this is true. Yeah. Listen. We need substance, forms right? Are for the dead. Okay. Right. You've got yeah. to give a dead fiction a form. Okay. The living don't need no stinking forms. You make up that's your right. own documents. That's cool. Gotcha. That's more powerful than all these. Uh, they're corporate forms. Okay. We've used all these other forms at one time or another, and it hasn't gained us shit. Okay. Make your own. Make your own. Yep. That's all there is. Okay. Yeah, I mean, basically, all the pictures out here, we've, we've been up and down every damn road out here. And some patriot claim, well, they're getting remedies. Well, like Winston uh, Stroud or whatever the hell his damn name is, he hasn't done one shit and thing he's ever said. <laughs> he uses everybody else's input, just like there are people out there using my documents. Mm-hmm. They may be getting remedy, but they don't show me any appreciation back that they did get any remedy out of it. But in a lot of cases, in some, in mo- and I'd say in the vast majority of them, they're using my documents inappropriately because they don't have the true understanding of what I was trying to do. Not read the definitions. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not understanding the words. And not having the balls to stand up when you do say something. And stand behind it. They backed down. Yeah, they had them on the, in the crosshairs, and then they let them out. 
I, I have an experience. I have an experience to share. You know, I filed some paperwork with the attorney general here in Washington state and they came to repossess my car and I called the sheriff and the end result was that the sheriff told them that they had to leave. I don't think that was like, Oh, that's something great. But I do think that something had that I told them that I had the paperwork filed with the attorney general. And that's when they worked with me. Uh And they told them they had to leave. Yeah. Yeah. See, in most cases, uh, you're still... everything that is, every arrest and everything that is done out here is not by the sheriff. It's done by the deputies or the police officers. The deputies, yep. And they're corporate employees. The sheriff is not. The sheriff is an elected. He's a, he's a people elected person, but he's not going to show up for the arrest out here, he's going to let the deputies do it. And then if you basically give consent to them, then you're giving them consent to embezzle you. That's why you need to read those definitions about embezzlement. And I, like I said before, You need to go into more than one dictionary. Don't strictly stick to the law dictionaries. Go and get a good either Webster's or Oxford Universal dictionary also. If you're going to get an Oxford Universal Dictionary, I'd say probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1930 uh, time frame. Don't get one that's hot off the printing press right today because basically uh, you don't know what they've got in that one. I got a 1964 Webster. It's pretty good. It's two volumes. It was a, you know, it's something I I I found uh, affordable. Okay, yeah. Pretty good. Before, in a lot of cases, before the public, or uh, before the bankers started taking over total control of all the publications agencies out here. See, the bankers controls the news media. They control most of the printing presses and everything out here. That's why you're getting all this garbage. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Uh, Yeah, Patrick. Uh, Hold on, Patrick. Yeah. Hello? Uh, would it make a difference in light of these new definitions if we call it constitutional bank or national bank? National bank. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. I started right. off with American bank, then I changed it to constitutional bank, and then after reading this definition uh, that the control of the currency basically is over national banks, and so we have to be a national bank. Okay, great. So it would be the name National Bank, Estate, and Trust. Okay, I see. Yeah. Um, the end game is that we are going into the private. Um, the When I looked up the word counter deed, we see that that's a, uh, a deed that destroys the uh, the public deed. Um, is, that's a point of control as well, right? There is no public is no- deed on this. Okay. Well, property? We're terminating, and we're going to bring it out under this letter of marquee and get it into our private estate. Okay. I'm talking about, like, uh, so, like, you're going to grab some real estate? 
But yes, what you're your saying is don't even worry about all that. Just, your just go after to your, your house, asset. Your okay. title to your vehicle, they're all under fraudulent embezzlement uh, that you gave them the damn uh, control over that thing. And so under the letter of marquee, you're going to be calling the, all those items back. Gotcha. Cool. I got you. That's perfect. Yeah. And you will put them Thank under you. the control of your estate, your national bank estate. And they will see all of that. So they'll everything's on the record. That's just perfect. Mm. It's going to be in mostly in your private record. It's going to come out of their public records, and it won't be any longer there. See, that's just like when you start operating your national bank, your birthing date is 90 days after you were born. In their church, they have to use the date the birth sack was born or birthed. That's you the birth date banking, they're banking. looking at. The, the nine-month birth date, which is a false birth date. It's an abandonment date. <laughs> I got you. Thank you. Abandonment okay. separation, yeah. Patrick. Yes. Yeah. yeah, what is the difference between this letter of marquee and the um, manifest? Well, the letter of marquee is you're going to put your manifest in your letter of marquee. In your letter of marquee, you have to address what they need to go after. So you put your manifest items into your letter of marquee. Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so how does one protect oneself from uh, the blowback that comes from uh, letter of marquee when they go in and collect all your accounts and sounds like somebody's going to jail? No, nobody will probably go to jail, okay? But then there's no You're not crime. going after this with revenge, okay? You're going after this to recoup, rate your estate assets. You go after this with revenge, and basically revenge will kill you. You lose all, you're insane. When you use revenge, you are in a state of insanity. <laughs> because you're not clearly thinking. Yeah, you have the peaceful solution of recoupment. So you cannot sign in prejudice? What? Uh, sign would signing in prejudice affect the document? You're not signing any of that stuff. Okay. Okay, that was all patriot misunderstanding of what's going on out here. Okay. That's what the bankers wanted you to do. They still got you to sign, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah. That without prejudice never saved anybody. So the word for with, with prejudice or without prejudice? No, they speak that you are, as the insurer, you are in a state of insolvency, okay? okay. That's what needs to be said. You're no longer going to be the insurer out here because they're all insurance contracts, banking insurance contracts. Okay. 
The insurance in this country was brought in in 1887. This is what the movie Daniel Webster was all about. Was keeping the damn insurance companies out of here. They killed Garfield to get that insurance into this country. Hmm. See, Lincoln and Kennedy weren't the only presidents that were killed trying to prevent some of this stuff from going on. Isn't there four presidents, five presidents now that have actually been killed and one of them was... It doesn't make a damn bit of difference. I'm talking about what happened here about the insurance. Yes. Okay. And then Roosevelt came in and basically uh, put out this system to pull the gold and silver away and put it into a conservative ship under a national bank with the control of a currency. But the people didn't understand what had just taken place. And they've been fighting everything in the wrong understanding ever since. So you're saying what Roosevelt did was kind of a good thing? In some regards, yes. Yeah. In a lot of cases, half the shit that was done was wrong. Right. Yes, he was a demonic worshiper. Yeah, he was doing the will. But he had to give you fucking remedy. Right, right. Okay. And the people didn't understand, and they've been looking at the thing from the wrong aspect to find the true remedy, because they didn't know the words. And the expatriation and the comptroller is the way. But being a national bank, doing it. Right. Right. A national okay. bank. Okay, anybody else have any questions? You you got to say the right United States, right? The United States Treasury. You just get it to the controller currency and basically yeah. go from there. You don't have to say you say too damn much and you're yeah. going to cut your own just damn throat. Okay, just say national okay? bank or bank banker. Just read the definitions I told you to read. Yeah, I got them right here in front of me. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, Patrick, yeah. is the comptroller the only place that we need to send this to? You can notify your attorney general's office. You can notify your county prosecutor. You can notify your U.S. district uh, trustee. Okay. Okay? Of these items. And say, hey, uh, basically we tried to communicate with your office. There will be a letter of marquee being uh, levied against your foreign corporations. To claim my estate assets, since you have not relinquished them the way I was trying to get them from you. That way, you give them an understanding that you're going to be standing in a different limelight with them from now on. And use the word embezzlement. That you're sick and tired of their damn embezzlement of your assets. If I can just add a comment regarding that, embezzlement, the fraudulent appropriation or concealment, uh, look up the word appropriation, and that uh, it will basically mean a takeover. So it's a fraudulent takeover. Yeah, taking it under their control, and then they're turning around and writing bonds against it for their benefit. 
We have never gotten any benefit out of them using our assets. We've had a deprivation. They're the ones that are getting the benefits. So how come when we try and claim some of our assets back, they're claiming that they're giving us a benefit? It's no damn benefit. That's total fraud. And then they try to give us peanuts. Huh? And then they try to give us just peanuts, just crumbs. You're not going to get a subpoena out of them, okay? No, he Their said court system is going to bar you in every regard from basically coming across them. That's no, no, why I you have meant... to go outside the system. Yeah. No, I meant peanuts. They try to give us crumbs just, you know, here, just a little bit off the table. I'm sorry, I still didn't understand what you said. He, he means peanuts, Patrick, not subpoena. He's they're giving us they're, they're giving us peanuts, not a su- subpoena. Yeah, basically they're turning around and writing bonds, and then they're giving us part of the interest from those bonds back to set it off, but the assets are still sitting there. Right. But... That's to say that we're hoping that the assets are still in those coffins. But we don't know until we get out here and have the damn issue our letter of marquee and appraisal and have the damn U.S. Marshals and the FBI bank inspectors go and open up those coffins and find out what's in them. That's what we're after, is our assets that are in the coffin. We're not after their interest or anything like that that they've accumulated. We're just after our property. And that's one of the audios that you need to definitely listen to on, uh, in the, 5,000 years about property, rights of property. Property doesn't have rights, but the people have rights to property. Mm. How about when uh, one finds that um, their estate was uh, pledged under a um, certificate of dedication to a church? which is basically, when I looked it up online, dedication means to um, release one's private use into the public. And basically one doesn't have, it's, it was gifted by, um, say, one's that is all. That is all not under this banking system, okay? That is all under your individual stuff that you have control over right at your immediate disposal. Yeah, and you're an idiot if you give it over to some damn stinking church. How about the uh, government-issued parents did that uh, when one was The government three. what? How about... The government- um, yeah, one's uh, government-issued parents, adopted parents, had registered that Social Security account name with a church under, and they got back a certificate of dedication. So I looked up the word dedication and found that it's taking one's uh, private estate and making, granting it to the church for public use. Your certificate of live birth was a national bank. Now, that dedication to that church was a uh, foreign entity, okay? That church is foreign, okay? There is no church that is not foreign to the Constitution. Separation of church and state. That's a state constitution, So all churches are foreign to the Constitution. So you do a letter of appraisal 
marquee and appraisal, and you put that down, that church, and let the FBI and the C- and the U.S. Marshals go and seize the assets from that church. Hmm. That's interesting. Just like the Amen. Church of Rome. Yep. The Church of Rome has an account out there for everybody under a SESTA K. I even got an EIN against the Church of Rome, supposedly for my account there. Hmm. I just got to try and find out where in the hell it's at in my paper. Hmm. That's an interesting But I did approach. get one, okay, from some of the documentation that we submitted in. I did an SS4 against the Church of Rome. And they turned around and sent me back an EIN against that. Did you send that to, like, New York, like you said? No, I... I don't know where I sent it to, okay? Okay, we can find out you that. Just, you just go with what yeah. you've got right now, okay? Okay. I just am curious. So, until you really start getting an understanding, then you can start going and broadening out. Right. Don't go after mom, pa's, uh, estate, or anything like that. You've got to get control of your own first. Then when you start seeing how you control and what you did to get there, then you can turn around and start going after your deceased relatives' estates, their bank accounts. Yeah, that's down the road. Okay, anybody else? Okay, call tonight, Tom. We'll talk to Thank you, later. you very much, Patrick. Okay. Very Thank much. you. Have a good night. Good night.